We are now going to talk about antiderivatives or integrals. Those two words mean the same thing, but let's focus on the word antiderivative. Anti meaning opposite or to undo, so the antiderivative is going to focus on undoing all the hard work we've been doing in finding derivatives. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Before we start, I want to make sure that the, sh the sheet that you're seeing here on the screen is available to you in Blackboard and that you should have printed that out and put and, and have that to your available uh, or have that available to you. The f we are much more dependent when we do antiderivatives on using formulas. There are some basic ones that we should know, but after that we often have to in mathematics go to what's called a book of integrals and match up what we have and what we're trying to find and find a formula for it. Um, but I'm going to try to make sense of that for you. So today this lecture is going to focus basically on uh, these uh, nine, I guess these nine little comments here. The next video will focus on substitution and then later we'll focus on the others. But these are all the formulas uh, that you'll need for the most part for your unit on antiderivatives. So let me switch over to a blank screen where we can start talking about these formulas, but if you'll have these handy that will help. The hardest part about doing antiderivatives is matching what you have to the formula you need. Now before we do that, let's actually talk about an antiderivative and what it, um, what it really means. I'm going to do it with a very basic example, hoping that you'll understand the concept and then we will use the formulas. All of these formulas were developed by mathematicians very much in a trial and error method. They said, oh, there's got to be a better way, and so they kept trying things and testing to see if they worked, and then they would find that they had come up with a shortcut. Much like when you're trying to find a new shortcut home from work, you might take a couple roads every now and then and end up in the wrong place, and then you, you eventually figure one out. Let's go back to derivatives for a minute. Let's start with the function y equals x squared. When we start with that function y equals x squared, we let's um, first do what we did last unit and take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So that should look very familiar and we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. When I do that, on the left side I get dy dx, and if we remember how to take our derivatives, we bring the 2 or the power down front, we leave the base alone, we decrease the power by 1, and don't forget that we always technically took the derivative of the base dx with respect to x, but that is normally 1. And so we um, didn't always write it, but we always, especially when we got to the chain rule, we made sure that we took the derivative of the base with respect to x, and also when we got to implicit differentiation. So we've taken the derivative. Now I'm going to do a little bit of manipulation. I can multiply both sides by dx and those would go away because those are in the denominator. And so we are left with dy equals 2x dx. We would also write that as y prime equals 2x dx. Yes, I know that I could have said dx dx was 1 and gotten rid of it, but I want to make a connection for you. So technically y prime is 2x dx and that is my derivative. So my original function was y equals x squared. My derivative was y prime equals 2x or 2x dx. Now the purpose of antiderivative is to undo the derivative. So how do I take this function right here that is the derivative and find the original function? Just like addition 
undoes subtraction, multiplication, and division, uh, square and square root. Those are all inverse functions. Derivatives and antiderivatives are also that same type of relationship. So I want to undo a derivative. That is called the antiderivative or the integral. So instead of taking the derivative of both sides, I'm actually going to take the integral of both sides. And so that squiggly line right there means integral, or it also means antiderivative. It is the inverse of the derivative. And think about what the antiderivative is saying is it's saying what function y did I take the derivative of to get 2x? And I took the derivative of x squared to get 2x or 2x dx. And so the, the integration will bring back our original function. Now I did that with a very simple one so you could see a couple things. How would we go from here to here? Well, one thing is that integration and derivatives are inverses of each other and so they undo or cancel each other out. And that's why the dx now goes away is the integral of dx is that we, we did not have that in the original function. But notice here, let me change colors one more time. Notice here the power was 1. I increased the power by 1 to make it 2. If you think about it, what did we do up top? We decreased the power by 1 for derivative. So for derivative, we decreased. For integral, we increase. And so notice how the d's go together and the i's go together. So derivatives decrease, integrals increase. Now, what happened to the 2 in front? Well, technically it's right there, but up here we multiplied by the 2. So down here we have to divide by the 2. And so the 2's would then cancel, leaving us y equals x squared. So up here we multiplied by 2, so down here we are dividing by 2. And if I can make that connection for you in the formula um, from your page, it says the formula of x to the n dx. So that's when we have just an x to a power. You increase the power by 1 and divide by the increased power. Because we multiplied by the 2 up top, we've got to divide by that 2 in the bottom. Okay. And then we always have to add this plus c. And let's talk about why. If our original function had been y equals x squared plus 7, and we took the derivative of that, we still would have gotten 2x because the derivative of the plus 7 is 0. So we're never really sure if in fact there was a plus 0 on the end of that function. And if there were, then that means there was a constant in the original. And so by putting this plus c on every um, general integration, we are saying there could be a, there could be a plus co a constant on there. I'm not sure because when I take the derivative of a constant, it's zero, it goes away, I don't have enough information. We will talk later about how to actually find c because you can when you have enough information. But for right now, we put plus c to acknowledge that the original function could have had a constant. The original function could have a constant. 
that is what I'm hoping you understand about the concept of integration. Integration is undoing the derivative. It is the inverse of the derivative. In order to integrate, you must have the um, your derivative and any pieces of the dx. And that gets a little bit sticky when we get into that substitution and making sure that the chain rule is represented within the integration. But hopefully this basic example gives you the concept of what it is we're trying to do as we um, undo our work in derivatives. So what we're going to do next is work through several examples and as we do we'll try to match up to what the rules are that we have on your formula sheet and um, go through these and then the key to this is just lots and lots of uh, practice. So let's look at the first example. x to the 15th, the integral of x to the 15th dx. So we're taking the integral of, we have a base of x and a power of 15. So this matches the formula x to the n dx with our n being 15. This is our basic power rule and the the integral of that again is if you look at your sheet you increase the power by one and divide by the increase. You definitely the first uh, few on this paper the, the the ones we're really talking about in this video are the probably the ones you need to know just outright. When we get into some of the others you would look those up in a table. So our n is our 15 to get the derivative of this we're going to increase that power by 1, divide by the new power, and don't forget to acknowledge that we could have had a constant. So if I took the derivative of this function, I would get x to the 15th. If I took the derivative of that, I would get x to the 15th. Another example the integral of 4x to the 2 thirds dx. This one has a constant in front, but just like when we had derivatives, when you have a constant, you can rewrite that with the constant in front of the integral. And now we have the same exact situation where we're taking the integral of x to a power. And so the 4 would stay out front we increase our power by 1, so 2 thirds plus 1 is 5 thirds, and we divide by that new power. Let's clean up by flipping and multiplying. So we have 4 times 3 fifths times x to the 5 thirds, which would be 12 fifths x to the 5 thirds. Don't forget that plus c to acknowledge that we could have had a constant. Another example along this lines is what if we have more than one term? Well it works the exact same way as the derivative. You can either go right from here but I do want to acknowledge that you technically would split this up. It would be the integral of 3x to the 8th dx so we're going to distribute kind of here, minus 7x cubed dx, and I could be putting these constants out front, plus uh, 9 dx. And so we'll use the power rule. Don't forget that this is technically x to the 0 right there. So when there's just a constant, think about what did you take the derivative of that would give you just the number 9, that, that question. So why don't you pause, I would recommend you pause and try this problem and then come back. Don't forget when there is a, a coefficient that just goes down first, increase your power by 1, divide by the new power. Same thing, bring your 7 out front, decrease, uh, I'm sorry, increase, I'm saying decrease and I'm increasing, increase your power by 1, divide by the new power, 
and same with the 9 it would be x to the first divided by 1 and we'll clean this up x to the ninth over 3 minus 7x to the fourth over 4 plus 9x don't forget your plus c so if you were to take the derivative of this original function you should get 3x to the eighth minus 7x cubed plus 9 so when things are added and subtracted together you can simply um, add in some more uh, or you can simply distribute and treat each one uh, separately now let's get a little bit trickier so number four how about the integral of 2x plus 3 to the oops to the fifth dx now notice here that we do not just have an x to the fifth we have a function to the fifth and it's very critical to look at the function notice that it is x to the first there are no other variables and then we have constants uh, and those co the co constants and the coefficients could be one if you look at your sheet we have one that's called the composite rule and the composite rule says if you have numbers and then an x to the first to the n think about the chain rule think about what we would have done if we had a function to a power we would have decreased the power we would have brought the power down front and multiplied decreased the power by one and then we would have taken the derivative of the chain rule in which we would have multiplied by that so now we're gonna have to divide by that and so you're gonna see these types of things popping up we're gonna increase the power by one we're gonna divide by that increased power and we're also going to divide by a because when we originally took the derivative of ax plus b the derivative of that would have been a and we would have multiplied by it so to undo that we have to divide so let's apply that to this one and so we're going to keep the original function increase the power by one divide by the new power and also divide by the derivative of what's inside because we would have multiplied by that so we're dividing by 2 so that's where that 2 comes from and so our final answer would be 2x plus 3 over 6 divided by 12 don't forget your plus C And again, it's important that you are you are practicing here. Okay, next example number five. How about the integral of x to the one dx, or that's the same as the integral of one over x dx? Think about what did we take the derivative of that the answer was 1 over x and the answer to that is simply the lin of x and don't forget we have to always put plus c so if I have 1 over x or x to the negative 1 dx the integral of that is lin of x because the derivative of lin of x is 1 over x so to check yourself you can just go back and forth a couple of, of other uh, one that's related um, what if I have uh, 2x I seem to be hung up on twos 2x plus 4 to the negative 1 dx this is exactly like number 5 but instead of just having an x as a base we have a function as a base which means when we did this when we took the derivative we had to deal with the um, the one over part the x to the negative one the one over part but we also had the chain rule we ended up taking the derivative of what's inside so it's going to look similar to what's up above and again these formulas are on your um, 
sheet, you're looking for the one ax plus b to the negative one dx. So see how the powers match and then there's numbers in those locations of a and b. And so it is the lin of your function, just like up here, we had the lin of x, here we have the lin, but we had multiplied by the derivative of that base function, so we're going to have to divide by the derivative of this, because we would have multiplied, which would have been 2. We would probably write this as 1 half lin, 2x plus 4, and don't forget the c. So the whole key is to be matching up that everything looks the same. Now, if this were a minus 4, that would be okay, 2x minus 4, because you could write that as plus a negative 4. I talked also already about that you can pull a constant out front if you had that. And the next one that I want to talk about is this one, number 7. The integral of e to the 3x dx. So if you remember what we took the derivative of that gave us um, the answer e to the x and that was e to the x. So the integral of e to the x dx is simply e to the x plus c. But we here have to take into account that we would have done the chain rule because our power has more than just x. And so to do that, again, we should see lots of similarities here. The, you're going to multiply, it's still going to be e to the 3x because the derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x, but we would have multiplied by the derivative of 3x, so we need to divide by the derivative of 3x. That's where that 3 comes from. So this would be 1 third e to the 3x plus c. So we're really having to focus to make sure that we undo the chain rule. And if you remember the chain rule, we kept multiplying by the derivative of everything. So now our goal is to divide by the derivative of everything. Very similar, number 8, is what if it's not e? So what if it's 2 to the 5x dx? So what did we take the derivative of that um, would give us like 2 to the 5x and that had to do with the whole lin that was it was a little bit messy and so here you go is it's the original function and it's the lin of the base now if you compare that to the derivative I think you'll you'll see some of the similarities there but we would have multiplied by the derivative of 5x so now I have to divide by the derivative of 5x, and don't forget the plus c. So these are the basic formulas, or the basic ones that you should get very comfortable with. Not that you wouldn't be able to look them up, but you should get very comfortable with those so that you can do those fairly quickly. We will talk about the substitution method which allows us to do most others without looking at a an integral book or integral table. Um, when you get into ex other exponentials and log functions, again it's looking in your textbook or in a table, finding what matches and follow that formula. And now all of the ones that you will need for your test are on that sheet that I showed you at the beginning of class. So if, um, if you remember the sheet here. So these are all the main formulas that you need um, for doing integration without looking up in a book. Um, but if there was anything messier that you needed to integrate, then you would need an integral book where you can look them up and find the formulas. There's one big thing here that we need to note, and that is right up here in this first one, 
that n cannot equal negative 1. So you will know right away if you're able to find the formula um, or if you've used the right formula there because if you have n is negative 1, if your power, if your original power is negative 1, your denominator becomes 0. That's why you have this special formula because when you increase you get 0. So I just wanted to point that out as well. So that's the basic idea of antiderivatives. It is critical that you go practice that first before you even watch the substitution video because you want to get you want to get good at the basics before I take you to the next level. So we'll see you back for substitution and um, good luck practicing with your antiderivatives.